I know that I'm more jaded than the typical person. I think stand-up comedians are generally more jaded because like I've experienced a lot of things in my life that I thought were gonna be dreams come true, but they were just, eh? <laughs> like I got to perform on a cruise ship and I was always so excited about that, but it's not that good. It's like a normal comedy club, except you try not to get seasick and there's no cell service. That's it. <laughs> It's awful. And he, they put you through this whole safety rigmarole because you're technically part of the crew. I learned what to do in case of man overboard. And I'm going to tell you because, well, I'm up here. And <laughs> if I stopped talking, that would just be the end. So this is what you're supposed to do. You get to yell man overboard. And that's everybody's dream, isn't it? We've all wanted to do that. Man overboard! That's awesome. But then you got to yell what side they fell overboard, like port side or starboard. And I wasn't paying attention, so I don't know which one is port side or which one is starboard. So I'd just be up there like an idiot going, man overboard, right here. <laughs> and then you are supposed to uh, throw the life buoy in their direction. That was the wording that the captain used, in their direction, not to them. <laughs> Apparently how close I throw it, totally up to me. If I, if I want to chuck it 10 feet away, I'd be like, burn 10 calories, would you, Kyle? Then that's fine. Because <laughs> let's be honest, like on a, on a cruise ship, sure, maybe man overboard's a problem on the first day, but like day seven on a floating buffet, come on, we're all buoyant at that point, you know what I mean? <laughs> so what's the problem? Just throw him a pizza, he'll be fine. <laughs> and the last thing you're supposed to do is, to, is point at them. And the reason you're supposed to point at them uh, is because uh, they could drift off if you don't. <laughs> that wasn't funny, but I'm glad there's some morbid people in the crowd. <laughs> that would be hilarious. <laughs> so I figure anyone can point with one hand. I got two hands. I can be doubly helpful. So sure, I'll point at you with this hand. Make sure you don't float off. But I'll use my other hand to point at any dangers that might be coming your way. Yeah, like a shark or something. So I'd be up there going, I got you, Kyle. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I don't need this hand anymore. <laughs> And yet still, the cruise ship shows were not the strangest shows I ever did. The strangest show I ever did happened in a small town in Manitoba, Canada. And I was driving towards my gig. I had punched the coordinates into my GPS. And I always talk to my GPS, so I'm always like, hey, Jippus, is this, is this right? And <laughs> you guys barely laughed. You just repeated the punchline. That was weird. <laughs> do you. So, and the reason I was concerned uh, was because we were going down all these residential streets and it didn't seem like this was right. So my Jippa says, no, this is right. And I'm like, are you sure? And he's like, yes. When have I ever steered you wrong? I'm like, uh -huh. well, there was that one time in Seattle when you didn't know there was a bridge there, but there was a bridge there. And he's like, why do you always got to bring up that one time? And I'm like, I bring it up because it was a big deal. You thought we were a flying car. Like, <laughs> Freaking out, maybe you're done, maybe you're done, maybe you're done. <laughs> He's like, no, this is right. So I get to the venue, and it's not a venue, it's a house. And normally I perform in like comedy clubs or theaters, maybe even hotels, places like that, but a house. How awkward would this be if I punched in the wrong address? This wasn't even right. What do you even say? How do you start that conversation? Hi, did you order a comedian? Like, what do you say? <laughs> and I'm super famous in Canada, so <laughs> no way for you guys to prove that. Uh, he opens the door and he's like, you're Matt Falk. And he said it with such intensity that for a second I forgot. He's like, you're Matt Falk. I'm like, yes. <laughs> So I go in the house, he slams the door behind me like way too aggressively and he's like, all right, take off your shoes, let's go in the basement. <laughs> Listen, I would be really easy to kill. <laughs> hmm? 
I'm a nice guy. You stab me, I turn the other cheek. That's how that works. <laughs> Gets you two stab cheeks, but it's my motto. Uh, so I go down into his basement. It's nothing creepy. He wraps me in saran wrap, and that's how he liked his comedy. No. It was a company Christmas party. Small company. Four people. I'm not joking, four people. You know how hard it is to get momentum with 400. Imagine four, that's just this front row without all of you guys, right? Imagine four, it was so uncomfortable. As soon as I saw them, I freaked out. I was like, oh, like I fushlooked on fear is what I did. <laughs> the guy who booked me noticed that I was nervous. He's like, oh, don't worry, not everyone's here yet. I'm like, oh, okay, I swear to you. He says, Tina's not here. <laughs> I do not know how to convey the awkwardness of the situation to you. I sat down on the couch with the audience. <laughs> and we just waited for Tina. <laughs> Together as a group. We're making small talk before the show. One guy's like, so how's the comedy career going? I'm like, not well, evidently. <laughs> I'm in a basement of my socks. What do you think, buddy? 20 minutes past, Tina hasn't showed up. Classic Tina move, am I right? And the guy who booked me, he wants to introduce me from across the room, but this is how he introduces me. He goes like this. It was just good. <laughs> it was just good. Now. Yeah. <laughs> So I just ended the conversation with this guy. I was like, excuse me a minute. I have to go to work now. <laughs> I just stood up and I began talking louder. <laughs> and it was as awkward as you think it was. There's, when there's nothing separating you and the audience other than a bowl of chips, it's gonna be a weird show. <laughs> But I was 45 minutes in and I was almost done and I'm like, oh, it's almost over and I can just put this behind me. But then, Tina shows up. <laughs> yeah, Tina's one of these people who needs everyone to know as soon as she enters the room. Everyone's got one friend like this. She practically kicks the door down. She makes some big Broadway Liza Minnelli entrance. Just, Poof. hi! Wow, the snow is really coming down out there. I'd much rather have snow than slush. Slush is statistically way more dangerous than the snow. Four weeks ago, I was driving, got sucked in the slush on the side of the road, and a tow truck had to come pull me out of the slush. But then that tow truck got sucked in the slush, and a second tow truck had to come pull that first tow truck out of the ditch. Then, because the union rules, that first one went home, and the second tow truck pulled me out of the ditch, and I get to the party. Hey, Glenn, is that your new wife? You guys used to live in the city. You go full country now. You live in the country. You churn your own butter, too. Can I have a chip? 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 <laughs> right? And. <laughs> yeah. Can't do comedy with that going on. So I just stopped the show. I was like, Vroom. I don't know what else to do. I was like, are you Tina? <laughs> She's like, yes. I'm like, we were all talking before you got here. And someone said, you sound like an owl. <laughs> My name is Matt Falk. I love you. Hey, did you know that Dry Bar Comedy has their own app? Download it right now to watch, save, and share clips and watch my whole special.